Well, we did it. Despite a little mishap during test firing last weekend, we got the axle fixed and the members bent back, and we are ready to fire at the Pumpkin Chucking Contest 2015. Now, this is a floating arm style trebuchet. You can see that the axle runs up top and that the counterweight goes in that vertical track. Our folks at Trinity Lutheran Church helped me build this trebuchet, and here's our medieval costumes. Our name is Eternal Heathen just like heaven a pumpkin or else eternal heaven, it's sort of a play on words. This is the front of the trebuchet where we crank down the arm. You note the arm here, half of it is wood, the other half is steel, and right where the steel meets the wood is where we attach the pull-down system. The other chain behind the pull-down system is for the release mechanism. And here, characteristic of a floating arm trebuchet, the counterweight's way up top. You can see where the pipes stick through and it'll slide all the way down that crack. Here at the tip of the arm, note the adjustable hook which allows me to change the firing point of the trebuchet. I'm slightly afraid of the sling breaking again, so we went to an army cot for a sling which is very heavy. And also instead of using this uh, light string, we're going to use full 3 8 rope. That has a breaking strength of 250 pounds which is almost double the white stuff. So this is the solution to the problem with it hitting the end so much. A uh, temporary solution was to put rubber bumpers up there to stop it. That way, when it comes over, it'll hit the bumpers and they'll keep it on the track and slow it down. We also beefed up our, th our pull-down system, but they come along pulley. You can see that these uh, sides, we just zip-tied them on, which worked out super easy. We have a chief decorator and he did a great job. Now let's check out the competition. Here they are all, li all lined up at the start line. These guys have brought demo derby cars that they intend to use as some sort of a slingshot. Up on the other side of our trebuchet is the local high school, which has a variant on the floating arm trebuchet, except that the counterweight doesn't ride in a track where the pivot is actually just free floating. Next is the Merlin style trebuchet. This one I'm really excited to see because supposedly this is the most efficient trebuchet design there is. And the one on the end is just a typical trebuchet design with a swing counterweight. Now let's see them fire. Up first is the demo cars. There it goes. Let's take a look at that from the other side. They get a lot of roll with their design, which helps them because they measure the farthest the distance any chunk of the pumpkin goes. And here's the Merlin trebuchet. This one's almost too efficient because the pumpkin couldn't handle the g-force and broke apart, which rained pumpkin on us. And there's a classic trebuchet design and a respectable distance. And here's a catapult. They came in the next day to show off their little catapult. That was really cute. Now let's show the public what they really came to see. A guy does have to go up and hook on the crank down system. After that it takes a ton of cranking to pull the trebuchet down because the rules state that it had to be cranked by hand. Ours was, it just took a while. And here we go. Nice throw. Notice on this next throw the release point. The pumpkin's coming off right at about 45 degrees, which elementary physics tells us is ideal for maximum distance. However, there are some engineers that will argue that it's better to have more of a line drive because that means that the pumpkin's in contact with the sling longer and therefore moving faster upon release. From my experimentation over the course of the weekend, I didn't see much difference when I changed the release point. It was more about the size and shape of pumpkin I picked. We were allowed three throws for competition, and our best throw was 476 feet. If you're wondering how far that is, this is a view looking back at the trebuchet, standing from where the pumpkin exploded. It's pretty far. Now on to more pumpkin chucking. The next day we had exhibition throws. You can tell the sky is much brighter, and we weren't facing a headwind like we were the day before. Yet, despite our best efforts, we never did hit that 500 foot mark. Our best throw was 486 foot, only 10 feet longer than the day before with all the headwind. I mean, the best part about the weekend was that we threw the trebuchet 12 times, and in all those throws, we never had a misfire. And that's a record I want to hold year after year. In this final throw, notice how much flex the arm goes through as it throws the pumpkin. That wood beam is flexing back and forth, and all that inertia carries it almost to the end stop, and then it crosses the track about eight times before finally coming to rest. Just like a pendulum. 
And now the competition is over and it's time to take the trebuchet home. We start by taking off the end stops and then move on to all the cross bracing in the front. This crossbar here as well as that X. Next we hook the tractor up to the arm and pull it off. Right here we had a little bit of an oopsie. The chain is just in the hook on the bucket and right here when the bucket goes down the chain drops out of the hook and the arm slammed to the ground. Luckily nothing was hurt. The side brackets need to come off. There's a lot of bolts that have to be undone. But the convenient thing about having a bucket tractor is that with two guys you can lift the thing up and then the bucket tractor just sets you down. Next we use the tractor to load everything onto a hay wagon. And here's the hay wagon all loaded up and ready to take home. We put the cross bracing back in to stabilize the frame for the road. After that we use the bucket to lift it up and stick the dolly under at right about the center point. Then we lower it back down onto jack stands to hold it up temporarily. The dolly itself is just held on with four C-clamps, one in each corner. For going down the road, a little extra security we put in strap clamps. And then we just hitch it up to the tractor. There goes the technically portable trebuchet. I say technically because it took a group of guys about an hour to break it down. But we made it to competition and had a blast. In the end, we won first place. The next closest was the Merlin trebuchet at 317 feet. Here's a picture of us. And this is the picture of me with my buddy in high school, Josh, who I originally built the trebuchet with. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to see the latest content from Craftsman David.